Hello and welcome. This video is all about pressure. So let's start with the definition of pressure. So the basic definition of pressure is that it's the force per unit area. So we have a force acting on uh, a surface and um, as long as the force is at right angles to that surface, that area, i.e. acting normally to the surface, then the pressure is the magnitude of the force per unit area, i.e. divided by the area upon which it's acting. So mathematically, pressure is force divided by area. Um, now, force is measured in newtons and area is measured in square meters. So one unit for pressure is newtons per square meter. The SI unit, the standard unit that we use, is the Pascal. All right, it's shortened to capital P, lowercase a, PA, where one Pascal is the same or equal to one newton per square meter. So it's a nice, easy conversion. It's just one to one. All right, so that's the basics. So let's have a go at applying that. Um, here we have a ballerina who is standing on the tip of one tiny toe. And what we're going to do is we're going to estimate the pressure on the floor from that point shoe. So it's between the shoe and the floor. So what we need to know is the area of the shoe now, um, and obviously the weight of the ballerina, which is the force we're talking about. Now I would say, um, not being an expert on these things, that the dimensions, if we take it as a rough rectangle, the dimensions of the end of her shoe are approximately five centimeters by two centimeters. Um, and if we take the weight of an average ballerina, I would say maybe 60 kilograms, which is equivalent to a weight of approximately 600 newtons. So we'll take the, the force in the pressure equation to be 600 newtons, the weight of the ballerina, and the area to be five times two centimeters. So let's put that all into place. So we've got the pressure is equal to the force divided by the area. Um, the force is 600 newtons, as we said. Now the area uh, here is in centimeters. So if we use five and two, we're gonna end up in centimeters squared and then have to do a tricky conversion. So the easier way is to convert these into meters first. So um, five centimeters is 0 0.05 meters, multiplied by two centimeters, which is 0 0.02 meters. So when we then calculate that, 600 over 0 0.05 times 0 0.02, we get 600,000 or 600 kilopascals. It's quite often expressed as kilopascals, thousands of pascals. 600 kilopascals, which is a very high pressure um, from the shoe onto the floor. Okay, so that's pressure. It's quite an easy concept. It's quite easy mathematically. No problems there. One other skill that you will need to uh, have is to link density and pressure and to find a new equation that links the two. Um, and a typical question, here we have a scuba diver um, with at depth H, uh, which is effectively the height of the water column above the scuba diver. And the question is, what is the pressure at this depth H? Because obviously water pressure or any pressure from any fluid, including air, increases with depth. Um, and that's what we want to calculate. So if we start off with our basic equation for pressure, pressure is force over area, um, but the force we're talking about is the weight of the water. And the weight of the water is equal to m times g, where m is the mass of the water and g is the um, gravitational field strength, divided by the area. And the area is the area at that depth, so the base of this cylinder here. All right. So we've got this thing for mass here. Now obviously the pressure is going to depend on the mass and the mass is going to depend on the density because we have a volume here, a volume of water. Uh, so we need to know the density of the water. So we can actually substitute out this mass because mass is also equal to the density of the water multiplied by its volume. So we can put this into here uh, in substitution for the, for the mass because they're both, because the mass is equal to the density times the volume. And when we do that, we see that the pressure, P, that's pressure, not, uh, not density. I, my P's and my rows look quite similar, but that's pressure P is equal to this new, new expression for mass, uh, density times volume, times G divided by A. So effectively, we're doing it per unit area. Well, this area is here, but this volume is also related to this area because the volume is the area times H. So if we just expand that out a bit, we've got the density times the area times the height h times gravity divided by the area. 
and as you hopefully can see these two will actually cancel out because they're the same area which leads us to our new equation for pressure uh, which is quite an important one so the pressure at a depth h in a fluid is equal to the density of that fluid times the height of the column of fluid above the area of interest multiplied by the gravitational field strength okay pressure equals rho hg or sometimes it's rho gh uh, so express the other way around pressure is equal to density of the fluid times the height of the column of fluid multiplied by the gravitational field strength okay and that's our new equation for uh, for pressure which links in pressure and density okay we'll have a go at using that in a minute um, here's just a couple of notes about, uh, about, pre about pressure in fluids. Um, the pressure is exerted equally by fluids in all directions. Okay, so um, there is no difference in the pressure uh, in any particular direction at that particular depth. The only thing it depends on is the density of the fluid and the height of the column above, as we've just seen mathematically. Okay, a uh, little note down here. Obviously, density is going to change with temperature, and therefore pressure will also be temperature dependent. Um, right, let's have a go at using that equation then. Uh, so here we've got um, a water system, a mains water system. We have a reservoir up here, and obviously there are pipes going under the ground which aren't shown. This, the pressure in these houses depends on the difference in height between where the reservoir is and where the tap is in the house. So the higher the pressure difference, because remember pressure is equal to density times height times gravity. Well, if it's water throughout the system, uh, then the density is constant. Gravitational field strength is constant. So then the pressure is just proportional to the height difference. Okay, so we're going to have higher pressure in these houses than we are in the houses up here because of the height difference between the reservoir and the houses. And the highest pressure of all is going to be where the... the, um, the the height difference is greatest. So let's have a look at this question. It says the reservoir is 10 meters above the highest houses, which will be these, and 35 meters above the lowest houses, which is obviously these. And what we're going to do is calculate the difference in the pressure. Okay, so we're going to calculate delta P, um, and that's going to be equal to rho times G, just rearranging a minute, times the difference in the heights. Okay, which we can call H2 minus H1. All right, so the pressure difference there is going to be um, the density of the water, which is 1,000, times the gravitational field strength, which is 9.81, multiplied by the difference in the heights. Well, the one's at 35 meters and the other one's at 10 meters, so the difference of those two is 25 meters. Okay, so we've got rho G times uh, delta H, and when you calculate all that, you end up with a pressure difference of 245 kilopascals. Okay, so that's an example of how you would use that equation. But in essence, pressure is very simple um, and you shouldn't have any problems with it. And, um, and that's kind of it. So thank you very much.